We are presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Down in Florida at the annual league meetings with Jets head coach Robert Sala. How has your first league meetings been as head coach of this team? Uh, it's been fun. You know, I uh, wanted to catch up with all the guys and, uh, you know, just to, to see all the general managers and ownership uh, groups and, and everybody really just gathering and having good conversation and uh, getting up to speed with the new league rules and all the different changes that may or may not be taking place. So it's it's been good. Can you take advantage of your downtime? I, I know coaches, when they get down here, you got to take care of business. We know that. But uh, this is a beautiful site. No, it is. I, and, and my wife is sitting at the pool right now. And <laughs> I'm about to go to meetings. So <laughs> um, any golf? Uh, you know what? Um, Hopefully tomorrow there's supposed to be some free time. Got we, we came down a little bit earlier, my wife and I, and uh, had a chance to play a couple of rounds, but uh, uh, over the past few days, no. Can I ask you a scouting report on your golf game, though? Uh, it's it's not where it usually is at this time of year, considering the weather in Jersey, but uh, but we're going to get there quick. But big off the tee? You got to uh, putt for the dough. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> no, you're not. It, it doesn't go as far as it used to go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the days where it just goes straight and not very far. That way I can score a lot better, so. Uh, speaking of getting better, what do you think about the steps your team has made since free agency started? You know, um, the, the, the character of the, of the locker room, we really, really like where it's at, you know, bringing in uh, Whitehead and uh, DJ Reed and uh, Conklin and CJ and Lincoln and bringing back Berrios. Uh, and we're, we're not done yet adding, but um, the character of those individuals and the way they approach the game and their, their professionalism is off the charts. Uh, they've all been part of winning organizations. They've been to the cha- uh, to the big game, and they've uh, they they understand what it takes. And uh, to add that to the locker room, uh, along with the fact that they are really good football players, is is uh, is really cool. Because a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> free agency, the expectation is just go who go after whoever is the perceived best guy, right? And it's it's all perception. One man's trash, another man's treasure. However you want to yeah. say it. But the reality is it's it's about match. It's about matching scheme, matching personality, matching uh, locker room presence, and, and match with what you're trying to get accomplished on your team. And uh, I feel like Joe and his staff, and uh, in conjunction with ours, really did a good job in terms of bringing in the right people uh, to add to this to this football team. You said in December, we talk every week throughout the year, you said the path is crystal clear where we have to go. Is that something that you and Joe came together and said, hey, listen, we are going to target character in this class. Yeah, I, I think that's just first and foremost, you know, like it's, you know, you, you give all the money only makes you more of what you already are, period. It's it's forever. It's every profession, especially in the game of football. And, uh, and you know, when when these young men are getting second and third contracts and they're getting all this money, uh, they're, you, you anticipate them. You know, it's not their fault if they either revert or continue being whoever it is that they are. It's mm-hmm. not their fault. So you. You go after the guys who are internally driven, who love the game of football, and you trust that if you if they're burdened with the responsibility of that extra extra money, they they're still gonna their character and their uh, true love and passion for the game will always shine. Can you talk about the pursuit of Tyree Kill and also Joe Douglas's philosophy in terms of hey, if there is something out there, what we're gonna do? Yeah, uh, you know the opportunity presented itself. Uh, uh, felt really good about how much we we're we we're putting in on the table with regards to I mean could we have been reckless and and gotten a deal done maybe yeah but uh, but at the same time it was a uh, it was an opportunity to go after one of the premier players in this league and and good for him you know he had conviction on going back to Miami and he expressed that and he 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 was able to get it done and uh, so we're we're excited to compete we we were excited to compete for him and now we're excited to compete against him. Do you think this place is going to become a destination? When you think about the character guys you just added in free agency, and that's one thing that Braxton Barrio said to after resigning that I wasn't going to hunt for every penny out there. Yeah, it's um, whenever you're rebuilding something. Yeah, and uh, you know I've said it before. This is the fifth time I've been a part of on the front end of a rebuild. The beginning's hard because the the you're, you're on the front end of a rebuild because things haven't gone well for a while. And so the perception is that you're not any closer to a championship than say someone else. And so, or, uh, and so you might lose out on guys who want to go after a championship, especially when money's even. Hmm. And uh, just to have that philosophical game plan where we weren't going to overpay for guys just to get them here. We wanted the guys to be a part of, we wanted the guys who wanted to be a part of our organization as much as we wanted them to be a part of it. And if all is equal, come on down, 
we'll flip this thing and and we'll do things the right way. And if you chose to go to another direction, that's fine. We'll continue building. We'll continue getting to this this place where it needs to be. And eventually, those fifty fifty balls, if you will, will 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 continually land in our favor. The the perception will change. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $500 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call one 800 270 can you talk about what you guys did at the tight end position? A slight overhaul there, bringing in C.J. Uzama and then Tyler Conklin as well. And how do those two complement each other? And part B of that question would be, what kind of flexibility does that give Mike oh, Flores? Man. The, the Those two, they actually complement each other very well. Mm-hmm. So C.J., obviously a big wide tight end, uh, really good in the flats, uh, running high crosses, uh, getting them on the move, right? Uh get the ball in his hands in space and as a big massive human being running with the speed he can he's he's hard to bring down he runs violently he blocks violently um really excited to have him and then Conklin who is also a very good run uh, run blocker um may not be as big but has all the grit and nastiness that you'd want out of a tight end he's a Michigan guy I know yeah you like there that. you go absolutely <laughs> Michigan guy. but um but at the same time his ability to win those one-on-ones to to work in man coverage and shake and and, and create separation, uh, he's able to do that. So to be able to mix and match those two, um, off the play action pass game, the drop back game, and and have uh, being able to utilize them as much as we can. I mean, it's 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 a really cool advantage for our offense. We added two very different playmakers uh, that can be used completely differently. Yeah. Um, along with Elijah, along with Corey Davis, along with bringing back Braxton and Michael Carter and Tevin Coleman came back, added to the offensive line. Zach will be a year better. We'll add more in the draft. So really like the direction that it's going in. Uh, how good is it going to get? We don't know. But at the same time, we're 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 very excited with the progress we've made over the last two years. Were there a lot of high fives in that room when Lake and Tomlin said, that Tomlinson said, yeah, I'm going to sign here because he definitely had multiple suitors. Oh, there yeah. On the market. No, it's, it, and it's awesome to bring him here. Uh, he knows our system, um, knows our, uh, knows Mike, knows John. And, uh, I was, uh, we're, we're, we're as excited to get him as I, as I hope he's excited to be here. So. Yeah. And how does that change the dynamic of the offensive line now? Uh, because you said today or earlier, a couple of hours ago that, uh, Lankin, he will start stay at left guard and yeah. then the abt in his second year in the league will move over to right guard yeah it's it's uh it's probably in my opinion being made much more of a deal than it really needs to be <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not a big deal going left to right right to left lankin's been doing it at such a high level uh for such a long time just leave him there abt will be fine it'll be a seamless transition. and he played tackle in college and he too. Played tackle. he's got the athleticism the smarts um and uh so it's it's he he's gonna be, he's gonna do great. Over there. We're not even worried about it. Uh, and so when people think position change, it's not a position change. It's just instead of going to your left or right, it's just it's it's semantics. No big deal, but no it's gonna cause headlines. I, let me ask you about DJ Reed. You were there yep. when the Niners drafted him. He's such an interesting dude. So competitive. Oh, he yeah. definitely fits the bill of what you're looking for. How can he do it on the outside at five nine? You know what? Um, I always talk about Nate Shepard being the king of strain <laughs> in terms of the effort and violence at which you play. And I, and, and because of it, I love Nate Shepard, love him to death. Um, but DJ Reed's going to challenge him for this okay? in terms of his strain and, and desire to win every single down. Um, you know, credit to DJ and shame on me. When I was a D coordinator at San Francisco, we looked at DJ as a nickel safety. Sure. And we tried to, pin him there and said, well, he can't play outside. He's too small. Um, because of COVID and roster restrictions, we had, and he, he had an injury, we had to cut him and hoping that we were able, we would be able to stash him for the year. Um, and hoping that other teams had restrictions to Seattle's credit, they claimed him, stashed him, waited until he got healthy. And over the next year and a half, he absolutely dominated outside. Yeah. And, uh, he, he proved he proved Seattle right. He proved me wrong, and I'm not afraid to admit You're that. You're being hard on yourself. No, here. it's and I'm I'm so proud of him. Like he is, um, it's a testament to 
who he is and and the type of mindset he has if you th- say he can't do something he will he will prove you wrong so be very careful on the challenges you make to him because he will prove you wrong and uh he's just got that mindset he's incredibly respectful uh can't can't say enough great things about him and uh super super excited that he's here what about jordan whitehead he's another guy who brings that postseason experience he already has a ring in his championship career speaking of championship pedigree the guys cousins of Darrell right. Revis. <laughs> Can you talk about him being potentially a tone setter for your defense? Yeah, you know, um, he did a lot of things in Tampa. He'd play corner, he'd play nickel, he'd play safety. And uh, for us, he's just playing safety. Uh, He's got an incredible feel for the game. He's got great instincts. He's got uh, got great – he's got a tremendous ability to communicate, great knowledge. And so we're – we're – it's not a projection. We, we feel like by putting him in one spot where he can see the same things over and over and over again and do the same things over and over and over again, that that instinctive, the, the strength of his, of his game, which is instincts, and his ability to trigger when he sees something will only elevate. And uh, it's going to take time, obviously, because it's a whole new system, right. and, and we're asking him to do something that he's never done before. Uh, well, he's done before, but not to the degree that we're going to be asking him to do it. But uh, He's in the same manner. He's got this chip on his shoulder. He's got this absolute love for football. He's he's young. He still has a third contract ahead of him. Uh, same thing with DJ. So that's another common theme, and that all these guys have third contract, have the ability to get a third contract still. So there's still a lot of hunger, a lot of love, a lot of uh, uh, desire to prove people wrong and, and on whoever doubted him. So again, with Whitehead, uh, really excited to see how he works in the system. And we were talking about guards before. You said earlier that, hey, listen, our safeties are interchangeable. Yep. Yeah, yeah they are. They're, they're interchangeable. Whether he's free, strong, they're all the same. And uh, um, does one have to do something more than the other? Sure. But but at the same time, they're, they're pretty interchangeable. But he's a versatile player. I think it's, some people mislabel Whitehead and say, well, he li- likes to come play downhill. Well, he does, but he, he does a lot of things. So, some of the things that he did in the middle of the field is what, what got us super excited also. So he, he can do both. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. I wanted to ask you about Berrios. Did you guys think at the beginning of free agency that, man, some team might just blow him out of the water? Yeah, you know, we were, we were thinking, we, we thought maybe there would be. Uh, uh, league's loss is our gain, right? And yeah. uh, now he's, uh, I'm pumped for him because he still got, got paid very, very close to what everyone thought he'd get. And uh, so he earned every last penny that he's gotten. And to have him in the fold where he's really carved out a niche for himself uh, between him and Michael Lafleur, and, and the way they've, uh, they've, they've found a role for him. And then obviously his maturation and growth in the return game, um, he, he helps in so many different ways. And uh, it's, al- it's always nice when you know that he's back there getting a punt because you know you're, at worst case scenario, you're going to have the ball back. And um, so to have him have him back there and to have him with the offense and have his locker room presence and and everything that he does for this team, it's 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 really good. To get, those are the guys you want to pay. What so. do you think? What do you think about Zach Wilson? Uh, he's taking it on his own to go down there with Corey Davis. He's thrown in Tennessee. The next time we see him, he's posing for photos with Braxton Berrios. But they're getting to work with yep. Elijah Moore. Obviously, those guys can do it on their own because you don't have him there. Uh, what do you think about him taking that initiative? Also, what does he have to do when he comes back? Uh, yeah, I think it's cool. He's, he's on this national tour going around <laughs> visiting his guys, and you have JFM texting, hey, come work out with me too. So, um, you know, I, I love the fact that he's investing in his teammates. Uh, and, you know, if he's listening to this thing, I tell him don't forget to invest in yourself too, you know, and just continue to work and continue to grind and get yourself better and understanding um, the biggest jump that he's going to make is – that football one-on-one aspect in terms of knowing the scheme like the back of your hand and where you're not even thinking about where guys are. You just know where they're going to be, and now you can just play with pure fundamentals, uh, letting the ball rip like he can and uh, and uh, and really taking a step in that direction. And uh, so, you know, really excited to get him back and uh, to see where he is from a mental standpoint. And uh, 
I know he's got great confidence, which he should be. He's extremely talented. It's it's going to come down to does he know the scheme? As soon as it comes out of his mouth, he's not thinking about who's at what. He can get people lined up. He can throw the ball exactly where he needs to throw it. He can work through his progressions without thinking. Um, and when he does that, I think you're – I, when he has that one-on-one aspect down pat, I think people are going to see a, an extreme jump uh, to the accuracy that we all saw in college, along with his ability to recognize coverages and, and elevate his game to a whole nother level. Do you consider this your first true off season? I mean, you were hired in January, and I think when a GM and a head coach get together, you got to have a year to watch how you implement your schemes and the familiarity of the staff. And, and, and mind you, you and Joe did not know each other yeah, before uh, he came in. No, you're right. And uh, it's funny, you know, Joe and I, uh, I mean, all last year we uh, spent a lot of time together and this year too, that doesn't change. But I think uh, a greater understanding of who our players are, laying the foundation of our uh, our schemes and, and, and what we're trying to establish, I think – What's great about Joe is that I, I think we see things exactly the same, uh, obviously, and and we have the respect of one another and the trust for one another to to be able to voice our differences and and challenge one another on our thought process and uh, come to a uh, a decision that's best for the organization. And uh, uh, Joe's Joe, Joe D's a rock star. He really is. He's he's unbelievable the way he approaches his day to day business and uh, the way he communicates and. And he allows us as a coaching staff, the forum to, to voice our opinions on what we, what we need. And, uh, you know, and it's, it takes a lot, you know, for him to, to be able to take all that input and then be able to take his scouts input and all the people that he trusts along with us and, and come to a decision that's best for this organization. He's, he's awesome. So nine picks in the draft, two in the top 10, four in the top 38. Um, what can you guys do here when you look back at the 2021 class? Like, what what are your expectations? Oh man, that, you know what uh, the initial expectation really is to to make good sound choices. Um, we feel great about free agency because it doesn't pigeonhole us to one position. We we're in position to take the best player available, um, and and to just be be sound in our thought process, be sound in our our evaluations. And make sure that uh, we're we're checking checking all the boxes, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, um, and and making the best selection for the organization, and trusting that they'll develop into the players that we're expecting them to be. And free agency puts you in a spot where you, you don't have to reach for anything. Yeah. Correct? Isn't yeah. that the way no, you guys are looking at this? Absolutely. There's there's no you know we we there's still a, a ton of positions that we can get better at, sure. obviously, but but the advantage to that. The disadvantage is that we have a lot of things to, to work on. The advantage to it is it doesn't pigeonhole us into saying, hey, we need this. We can take the best available player, whether it's a receiver, a corner, a safety, a D lineman, O lineman, it doesn't matter. If they're the best player on the board, it'll, they'll help us. And um, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, such an exciting offseason. Uh, you get this done with free agency. Now the draft is ahead of us. I wanted to ask you about the postseason experience. You talked about character of the guys. Did that add into the equation that Uzama just played with a young quarterback and they went to the Super Bowl? They went from two to four and they're in the Super Bowl. You're talking about a guy like Lincoln Tomlinson, who was part of the build with you guys in San Francisco. You were there in 17, then in 18, you guys make the jump. He's in the postseason last year playing an NFC championship game. Uh, Jordan Whitehead has the ring. What is that going to add to the young guys to your group? You know, they when um, they know what it takes. They know what a winning locker room looks like. Uh, you know, with with great respect to this Jets organization, it, it just has it has had one winning season since what 2012, something like that. Yeah. Um, Back know, in 15, right? 15. Yep. So it's it, it hasn't had a lot of success, and um, uh, but at the same time, there's there's other people in this league who have had success, and to inject. From the outside, obviously, you want it to be homegrown or whatever. But when you get guys who are like Jordan Whitehead and DJ Reed and Conklin and CJ and bringing back Braxton and uh, and even Lincoln, uh, you're you're bringing guys who not only know what it takes, but they're they're good dudes. They're not looking for a paycheck. It's the the the, the paycheck is icing on the cake of their love for football. And uh, and so we're, we're we've brought in the right guys that know how to do it. They know how to prepare. They know what that strain in the fourth quarter looks like when you when you've got to make a play to to end the game or or win the game either way and uh uh really excited about the guys we brought in and um 
and continuing to add those types of people is always going to be at the forefront. And lastly, I just wanted to get your thoughts on all this player movement in the NFL. Everybody says, hey, the NFL is the most popular sport in the United States. The NFL offseason might be the second most popular sport. No, it's <laughs> it's uh, what, what I say this morning that it was uh, the NFL is a year long sitcom and uh, or soap opera, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the the ebbs and flows and the excitement and the drama that uh, uh, that comes with it is it makes for great entertainment and uh, shoot even I'm refreshing the pressing the F, yeah? F5 button on pro football <laughs> talk to see what what's happened next you know so it's it's exciting uh the NFL is uh is the world's greatest sport at least this country for sure and um uh it's and it's only growing it's only getting better and just being part of these league meetings and and just seeing the vision for the future and the things that they're attacking that I didn't even know existed it's like it's no wonder why it's uh the nfl is the beast that it is right now well we appreciate you so much for coming by and, and appreciate ch- you guys chatting it up and uh the final thought here i just uh somebody caught a photo of your socks today the sock game oh, gave the, you a lot of props the socket did i okay yeah yeah, no, yeah. I, I figured i'd bring out the pink yeah that's, yeah i'm not gonna lie to you that's my wife's uh that's good matching she, right she there dre- she dresses me style and <laughs> profile and robert Sala. thank you so much thanks brother